expert coming up. And finally, Biden is missing in action at the southern border, and that's where we're going to begin tonight. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki had to circle back once again when pressed on whether Joe Biden has ever been to the southern border. Take a listen. Has President Biden ever been to the southern border? In his life? Yes. I will have to get look back in my history books and check the we, times he's been to the southern we border. We have been looking all morning, and we cannot find any record of him visiting the border as president, vice president, senator, or even as a concerned citizen. Why would that be? I can check and see when the last time or when he may have been. I mean, this woman never has an answer for anything legitimate. It's, it's mindlessly frustrating. But Biden has nearly half a century in public office. I mean, he, Biden, Joe Biden is so old that when he sat in the Senate initially, he served with people who were born around the same time as the light bulb was invented, the 1800s. I mean, no, there's no record of him at all ever visiting the U.S.-Mexican border. Even as this mounting crisis has created, you think he might want to go down there? Well, joining me now to weigh in, in is Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek. Uh, Congresswoman, I got to say, this is just out, out, outrageous that in 50 years he never went to the southern border, which is like a, a real thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, it seems that uh, Jen Psaki is going to have to circle back uh, once again on that. <laughs> it is amazing to me, and I should say that I'm surprised, but these days, really anything goes in this place. It's pretty incredible that when we have a historic crisis, 308,000 gotaways, historic levels of narcotics coming through, truly enough fentanyl to kill every man, woman, and child in the state of Florida 16 times over, and you have Jesus. criminals, sex offenders, uh, gang members, you have over a million, approaching a million and a half apprehensions, over 140 different countries, uh, nationalities have been seen at the border, and they can't even call it a crisis. Mm. And the White House says they can't understand or find if the president of the United States has been to the border. I mean, give me a break. Right. I just, yeah. I, you know, as a member of like Congress, you, you, you expect a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is a basic yeah. fact, well, something it, that they should talk about. Right. Look, I'm 38 years old. I've never been elected to higher office or anything. I've, I've been to the southern border twice, I mean, and one time to see what the heck was going on down there because it was so bad. I'm glad you brought up multiple nations coming through that border. One of the things that, yeah. and, and we have a, a mutual friend on, on Instagram, DC Drano, who, who tweets some amazing yeah. stuff. And one of the things he did, he put out this graphic. It's, it's, a, it's a, a graph, and I wish we had it. My producers are going to kill me because I didn't tell them about this before I went on. But um, <laughs> it, it showed where Haiti is, and it showed where they're being apprehended at Texas. And they're 2,000 miles apart, and there's no direct yes. path because you've got to go across the Gulf of Mexico. So how in the hell did 14,000 Haitians end up 2,000 miles away when they had to go all the way down and around and are being apprehended on the southern border of Texas? So here's what's really interesting. You know, just yesterday we had Secretary uh, Mayorkas uh, testifying before my committee, the Homeland Security Committee. And one of my mm. colleagues actually mentioned to him that uh, he himself had been down to the border. Now, myself, I've been there three times. I have seen firsthand the disaster, the chaos, the crisis that has unfolded there. But one of my colleagues actually spoke with some Haitian couples and some Cuban couples. These folks have been camped out in Chile and Argentina. And when Mayorkas suspended the flights back to Haiti, the first week of September, and I know this because I asked him point blank, who was responsible for the suspension of the right. flights? He danced around it, of course, as any bureaucrat does, but eventually we grilled him to the point where he was nailed, and he admitted it was him. Well, you know what that did? And I know this because I was speaking to a couple of the Border Patrol agents during this hearing. They were texting me. They said when that happened, people sitting at the border sent messages out all over Central and South America, including the Caribbean. They said the, the border is open. They're not sending people back. Get here now. So you have probably estimates of 45 to 60,000 Haitians that have been camped out in Argentina, in Chile, in South America since the major earthquake several years ago. They have been waiting for an opportunity. They are showing up at the border with Chilean ID cards, with ID cards from Argentina. One of the Cuban couples that my colleague actually talked to said that they got notice that they weren't sending people back. So they got on a plane, mm -hmm. went to Panama, from Panama, went up through the Mexican border, and it was less than 40 hours. They left Cuba, 
and they were at the southwest border in under 40 hours, Ooh. and they were being processed. How nuts is this? Um, unbelievable. So, I mean, who is funding this? So, I, I got to say, you know, you, you obviously, you're a responsible representative, so you've been to the southern border. You've seen it. But since we're, on, you know, doing science and data and things, I can't go down the street to get a cheeseburger in New York City without showing a vaccination card. But if you're a Haitian right. immigrant, Cuban immigrant, whatever immigrant from Timbuktu, you can just waltz in right across the border, get resources, a flight to anywhere you want to go without any type of vaccination or even a COVID test. Absolutely. The double standard, the hypocrisy, it is outrageous. You know, we already are seeing where if you are someone from Europe and you want to come to the United States, you have to have proof of vaccination. You quarantine, you go through the whole song and dance. If you are coming up through the border illegally, you have a welcome mat rolled out for you. Let me tell you, I have been there three times. I have talked with agents from all walks of life. I've talked with the HHS personnel, the FEMA personnel that are down there helping process Department of Public Safety. There is no COVID testing. There are no vaccines. What happens is they have two medical contractors for every single shift. Mm. They are checked for lice. They are checked for scabies. They are not checked for COVID. If they exhibit signs of COVID, Ooh. that takes two Border Patrol agents off the line to escort them to a local hospital where they then are babysat for multiple hours on end while they are checked out at the local hospital. Do they get a bill? No. You and me, the taxpayer, we pay for all of this. It is time that we get it's loud. We put our foot down. We cannot do this any longer. Every town in America is a border town. We are at risk. The drugs, the criminals that are coming here, it is a travesty. And we have known individuals that are on the international terrorist watch list that have been apprehended at the border. Imagine all the ones that are getting away that we don't even know about. This is a huge crisis. That is a scary, scary issue. And you know what's terrible? You know, Secretary Mayorkas yesterday said to me, to my face, a member of Congress conducting oversight, that he would not give members of Congress a classified briefing on the known terrorists that they have apprehended mm -hmm. at the border because it didn't fit his schedule. Yeah. Well, so, uh, Congresswoman, I want to ask you real quick, and I got about 30 seconds left. This $3.5 trillion dumpster fire that they're trying to pass down there, um, <laughs> has anybody actually read it? No, that's that's the, the wonderful thing about how the Democrats and Nancy <laughs> Pelosi run the House. They don't give any language. In fact, the NDAA, which we are going through amendments right now, uh, no one's looking at language. We're pulling language, reading it and behind uh, closed doors while we're getting it as it comes mm -hmm. along. The, the actual body of the legislation for this reconciliation package and infrastructure bill has not been put together. And I'm telling you, what we are seeing is Dems in disarray. All we need is people to continue to call their member of Congress, demand that they shoot this down. This isn't just $3.5 trillion. This is $68 trillion over the course of 10 years. It's time that we say, no, enough is enough. We yeah. cannot afford this. This is a Biden plan to bankrupt our country. Wow, that is, that is just a staggering note. It's like enough $1 bills to go to and from the moon about a dozen times. Congresswoman Kat Kamek, yeah. thank you very much for coming on. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you so much. Have All a good right. one.